The book of 1 John, chapter number 5. When I start off preaching this morning, I don't want y'all to think I'm crazy because I'm not. I have been accused of it a few times. Probably even acted like it a few times. Amen. But the Lord was just dealing with me over and over and over on this. And if you found 1 John chapter number 5, say amen. amen. Starting in verse number 5, let's read along. The Bible says, Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And there are three that bear record, or bear witness in the earth, the Spirit, and water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. And if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. And he that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. And I want to preach a weird title this morning, but this is what the Lord dropped in my spirit. And I want to preach on this thought, Witness Protection Program. Witness Protection Program. Please help me pray. Dear precious Heavenly Father, Father Lord, I love you. Father Lord, with a love that I can never describe and define. Father Lord, as we open up the bread of life this morning, Father Lord, I'm asking for an anointing. Father Lord, to fall in this sanctuary, anoint me to preach. Father, anoint the people to hear what thus saith the Lord. Father Lord, I make no bones of it. I can't preach if you don't show up. Lord, I'm so dependent upon you. Father, I'm just mere flesh and bones, but Father, I need your unction and your anointing and your touch. Father, Lord, anoint me to speak thy word, and Father, anoint the people to hear it. And Father, we'll stand on the word that says if we open our mouth that you'll fill it. And we ask it in the most wonderful and precious name of Jesus Christ. And the church says, Amen. Witness Protection Program. Bear with me for just a few moments. The Witness Protection Program is intended for crucial witnesses whose testimony puts them in immediate danger. People, listen to this, who are on the inside of gangs, drug runners, the mafia, etc. Listen to this verse, 1 Corinthians 6, 9-11. through 11. Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor infeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. And such, listen to me, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And 1 Corinthians 6 and 11 says, And such were some of you, but you are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Let me read two more scriptures to you. Ephesians 2 and 1. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past you walked in according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience among whom also we all had our conversations in times past in the lust of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath even as others one more scriptures Ephesians 5 and 8 for you were sometimes darkness but now are you light in the Lord walk as children of 
have lied. Now listen to me. That I told you the witness protection program in the United States started by the federal government was those that were listen. They were part of gangs or part of drug trafficking. They were part of the mafia. And listen to me. Their witness would put away and save others from, 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 from falling prey into these evil men. Everybody with me this morning will listen to this. You and me were on the inside of how Satan works. We, have, we know exactly his tricks. We know his his, uh, his, his deception. We know His lies. We know everything uh, that He's able to throw at the world. And I want to tell you this. Uh, you are on the inside of how Satan works uh, and you are witnesses unto others of, of His lies and deception. And listen to this. Uh, you have the power to be a witness uh, to save others uh, from His traps. Kind of going along with what Brother Jason was teaching on this morning. Uh, how many know that God has made us all to become fishers of men? Uh, everybody in this congregation and everybody that calls herself a Christian, what are we supposed to be doing? We're supposed to be letting our light so shine before men that listen that others, the people in the world, could see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. But let me tell you this, because you have that witness within yourself, how many know that, listen, the Bible says, he that hath the Son hath the witness inside himself. Listen, you've got an adversary, the devil. He wants to destroy you. He wants to kill you. You have become a crucial witness unto Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. I mean to tell you, listen to me. Can I tell you what would happen if the church would literally let their light shine out in the world and let people see the Jesus inside of them? Amen. Somebody help me preach. I believe that little old people like me and you, even though we're just flesh and bone, listen to me, we're saved and we're sanctified, we're justified, we're filled with, with the Holy Ghost. The Bible says that we are the salt of the earth. Oh, the Bible says you are the light of of the world. Somebody say amen. I believe if you could, if we could ever just learn to let our lights shine in darkness, I believe people could see our lights and want to come glorify our Father which is in heaven. But listen, you were on the inside. My God, I'm going to have to get to exactly where I was. Oh, oh, listen to me. Church house ain't for perfect folks. It's for people who have been out in the world. People who used to be held in the power of darkness and the power of Satan. But the thing was, they were turned from the power of Satan until, listen to me, the marvelous light of Jesus Christ. Oh, some of you being held in drugs. Some of you being held in alcohol. Some of you being held in filth and pornography and all this other stuff. Can I tell you what you possess inside of yourself? You possess a witness unto the world that if I can overcome the world, if Jesus can overcome the world, He said you can overcome the world. You are a witness inside of yourself to this world that you can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens you. Somebody needs to look at your neighbor and say these words I'm going to help the man preach this morning oh but listen to me because you've been put on that witness list that your witness and your testimony and your life and your life that you hold listen to me listen it's, it, it's able to destroy all the works of darkness therefore listen to me you are a crucial witness and Satan has set his desires on you to destroy you oh somebody's not hearing me preach he sets traps for you not only by himself he's got imps and he's got demons is that he sends all throughout the world. They're, they are the prince of this world. And like Jason said in Sunday school, you got a big old bullseye on your back. And that bullseye is this. Do you know the power that you possess? You can drive hell off of people's life. You can drive drugs out of their lives. Somebody says amen. And because you are a threat to the kingdom of God or to the kingdom of Satan, he's put a target on your back and he's let all the hounds of hell, my God, somebody hear me preach, loose on you and telling them, I don't care how you do it or what you do. You find a way to destroy them. Now listen to this. Are y'all with me this morning? Witness protection program. One of two things happen. I'm going to preach this morning, but y'all going to have to help me push through. One of two things happen to get you into this witness protection program. The first way that you get into this thing is that you simply grew tired of living that miserable, wretched existence right. that you lived. Right. And you heard through a preacher, you heard through a song, through a radio, through a DVD or a CD that somebody might have given you, that there was a way that you could get out of your lifestyle. Right. If somebody is in a criminal, in a mob, in a, in a drug ring, Listen to me, they know from, 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 from people telling them and they know from watching shows like NCIS 
and criminal minds that they know that there's a program that the government can put them in that is called the Witness Protection Program. It can guard them and watch over them. And through the preaching of the Word, can I tell you what somebody in this house has heard? You've grown miserable living the way you're living. I'm just telling you what I'm feeling. You, I mean to tell you, you're in misery. You're wretched. You don't know how to get out of it. You don't know what to do. But yet you've heard this old preacher preach time and again uh, that there is a way that you can get out of your life, out of your sin. It's through the name and through the blood and through the power of the God of Almighty, through Jesus Christ. Uh, and what happens is when you're in that program, the first thing that happens, you just grow tired of living your life in that manner and you go to the authorities because you could hear they could help. This morning I got some news for you. If you're in that place, can I tell you there's a name that is above all names that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that He is the Lord. Somebody say Amen. And you've got to call upon the authority, upon the name, upon the power of the only begotten Son of God. Oh, somebody needs to hear me. There's a second reason. This is how most most of us got it. Look at your neighbor right quick. I'm going to help him preach. The second way you get it was this. You got busted. You was out there doing things you shouldn't have done. Living your life the way you shouldn't have lived it. And all of a sudden in the middle of the night time there was a raid. There was a knock on the front door. And when you opened up that front door, it was the police, or the popo as some people call them. And they come in and they busted you and you was found guilty. Can I tell you, that's how most people get saved. You're living your life and you're out here doing your drugs. You're out here doing your alcohol. You're out here doing this. And all of a sudden, somebody's been praying for you or you heard a preacher preach a message. And all of a sudden, in the middle of the night time, can I tell you what happened? There was a knock upon your heart's door. And can I tell you who it was? It was none other than the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He said these words, you've been found guilty and I'm going to arrest you. I'm going to lock you up. And that's where you found yourself right now. You're locked up in a prison because you know you're guilty, but yet you're not really sure what to do. My God, listen to this. John 16, 7 and 8. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send Him unto you. And when He has come, talking about the Holy Ghost, He will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Now let me preach just a little bit. See, most of us live in our lives can I tell you, we was trying to enjoy our sins. We wanted, our, we wanted people in our lives, on our jobs, our friends, to think that we was doing this and doing that and we was enjoying it. But inside, dear my God, deep down inside of us, we were in the most misery that anybody could ever know that we was in. Do you know why? Because the Holy Ghost had come done, knocked on your door and He said, I've got your number and I'm going to place you under arrest. Somebody needs to hear me. And can I tell you what the Holy Ghost does when He comes up and finds you? He lets you know that you are guilty. Amen. He lets you know that you are a sinner. He said, I come into the world. Why? To reprove the world of sin and of judgment and of righteousness. And can I tell you what happened? But not only does the Holy Ghost tell you that you're a sinner, He'll start telling you this too. There is a way out of your sin. Ah, let's see, the Holy Ghost will never come to you and illuminate a problem that He's not pointing to the direction and to the, to the way out. Can I tell you this? Can I tell you what Jesus said about the Comforter? He said when He is come. He's going to testify me. He's going to take a mind. He's going to show it unto you. So can I tell you what happened to the rest of us? The ones that just didn't by, by our own free choice and will go to Jesus and say hey we're a sinner. We had to be arrested. We had to be drugged. We had to be pulled. And can I tell you what he said? He said listen if you'll offer up your testimony to a lost and a dying world I'll let you go free. Yeah. My God, I'm preaching. In other words I'll offer you immunity. For your witness. How many know the Bible says he that knew no sin becomes sin that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. How many know somebody needs to help me preach for just a moment?
How many knows that there's never been another person other than one that ever lived a perfect spotless life to where he was innocent, to where he was not guilty, to where he had no sin, to where he was without spot or without blemish. There's only been one. All the rest of us, can I tell you what? Because we've messed up at least one time in our lives. You might not be a druggie. You might not be an alcoholic. You might not be this. But because you've messed up at least one time in your life, you are guilty of the whole law. Somebody say amen now. Listen, you don't even have to commit a Adultery, to be an adulterer in the eyes of God. Somebody say amen. All you got to do is commit one little sin in the eyes of God, break one commandment, and you're guilty of everything that's in that Bible because the wages of sin and death, listen to me, they are principling and they are reigning in your life. Somebody needs to hear me. But I've come by this way to tell you this way. There is a way out. You don't have to live like this no more. And I want to tell you this morning, he sent this little preacher to tell you this morning that listen, he becomes sin that you can become righteous. He, 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 oh, somebody needs to hear me. I said he took on the nature of a sinful man. Listen to me. The Bible said he that was made above the angels, he that, he that was in heaven crying, holy, 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 the angels were day and night. Can I tell you what he did? He took on the nature of sinful man. He becomes sin for you. Do you know why? Because he said, all oh, God, I want you to do is offer your testimony to the rest of the lost and dying world. I'll let you go free. You can go home to your mama. You can go home to your your daddy. You can go home to your, to your son and your daughter. You can love them. I'm going to go to a whipping post and I'm going to go to a cross. I'm going to lay down my life. But yet you can have life and have it more abundantly. Why? Because I've arrested your heart and I'm testifying to you while you're locked up in this prison. You know I'm preaching to you and I know I'm preaching to you. He said these words, you're in misery, you're locked up, you're in chains, you're in bondage. But listen to me. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So one way that we get in this program is we just read a book that's got the gospel in it. Or we hear a sermon preached that's got the gospel in it. We hear a song sung that's got the gospel in it. And we hear it and you know what happens? We say, I realize I'm a sinner. I realize that I've been hooked up and I've been joined up to something I shouldn't be joined up with. And voluntarily we fall on our knees and we say, Lord, I need you to save me. Yeah. Most people don't come that way. Most people come kicking, screaming, yelling, yeah. holding on to everything they can. Can I tell you a funny story about holding? Holding was a little boy one time in Sunday school, backing up. I know I'm going to get in trouble when I get home. He was about three or four years old, maybe five. I don't know how old he was. He was acting up. His mama was going to bring him upstairs, make him sit, through, sit, sit with me through kids' church. Sunday school had just got over and I taught Sunday school. And here she comes. She come up there with him, come up from the downstairs and said, listen, he's acting up and he's no longer welcome in my class. I said, all right, I'll take him. I'll take him, make him sit up there on the front pew, let everybody watch him. I take him in my arms. I turn around to walk off. Holding on for dear life. I said, son, let go, and I yanked him. When I got over here to this side, he grabbed a hold of the refrigerator. I got him broke through from that refrigerator, turned around, and there was a man that was a well known drunk. Had come to church that morning, had to go to the bathroom. And I turned around, there he's at, he's got this weird look on his face. I said, he was acting up. He said, I don't care. I just got to go to the bathroom. I yanked him from that refrigerator one more time and he held, held on to the other door. Somebody needs to hear me. Then I took him upstairs. Should have made him sit with me on stage in front of the drums, but that's not what I did. I put him on the front row. Thought he would behave himself. And all during the music, he's throwing himself down. I see his head come up and I see him throwing himself down. I think, my goodness, he's pitching a fit, embarrassing me to death. But do you know that's how most people get saved? They keep grabbing onto everything they can because they don't want to get rid of it. Oh, somebody needs to hear me because they don't know what's going to happen. The fear of the unknown. Can I tell you what happened when I quit latching onto everything in this world? I found peace and love. 
love and joy like I've never known. I mean to tell you, it's been something that's held me, it's picked me up, it's wiped me off. Somebody needs to hear me. Jesus has never kicked me back down. When I do mess up, He picks me back up. He says we can go on another mile if you'll just go ahead and put one foot in front of the other and walk. Somebody needs to hear me. But I said when I found Jesus, I could testify this. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. He's been good to me. Has He been good to you? Can somebody help me preach this morning? He's a God that will never leave you, never forsake you, will go with you even to the end of the world. But sometimes He has to arrest you and lock you up. Oh, somebody needs to hear me. Oh, somebody needs to hear me. Oh, can I just preach a little bit? Before I got saved, my life was miserable. I thought, my God, what am I going to do? I can't live another day. About to lose my house, about to lose my family, about to lose everything I got. And when I hit the bottom of the pit, when I could go down no farther, I looked up into the hills from which cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. Oh, somebody needs to get excited this morning. He's picked me up ever since. I'm here to tell you, He's a good God. But most people don't voluntarily get saved. Can I get a witness this morning? Most people have to lose everything. And they get this stripped away from them. They get this stripped away from them. And they get to a point to where they're thinking, I can't live no more. Somebody needs to hear me preach. Can I tell you that's the mercy of the Lord? If He strips something from you and you're in misery, but yet you're not dead. It's the mercy of the Lord. I got to have to get a witness up in this house this morning. I said, listen to me. He could take everything you got. He could take your health. He could take your finances. He could take your house. He could take your family. He could take your wife. He could take your cars. He could take your sanity. He could take everything you got. But yet, if you're still alive, it's the mercy of the Lord. The Bible says it's the mercy of the Lord. The goodness of the Lord leadeth men to repentance. Some man needs to hear me. Well, it can't get no worse than it is now. Oh, yes, it can. You just go ahead and quit ignoring the authority of Jesus Christ. Oh, I feel like I got a warning for somebody. You keep on ignoring it for a little bit longer see what happens. You think it can't get no worse? I'm here to tell you. It can get worse. Somebody needs to hear me. But it don't have to because there's a name above all names that you can call on. All you got to do, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now listen to me. Let me move on with my sermon. Whether you were arrested or busted, had your picture in the Just Busted magazine or not, he offered you immunity for your testimony. I said, He offered you immunity. What is immunity? It means the law can't touch you. Somebody ain't fully seen it like I am. Nobody else is excited this morning than I am. All I know is this. I was in a place where everything was stripped from me. And can I tell you what I see when I laid in the bed at night time? I heard this voice guilty, 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 guilty. Guilty. Somebody needs to hear me. But then behind it, a voice would come this. But you can go free because whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Somebody, my God, I was arrested. I was busted. I was locked up in a prison of misery, a prison of agony. Somebody needs to hear me. But there was a little old voice come to me said, But listen, you can go free because I died for you. Let me move on. Listen to me. And if you get into the witness protection program and you're offered immunity for your testimony, the first thing you had to do is you had to put your faith and your trust in that the witness protection program was able to keep you safe. Yeah. My Jesus, hear me. They keep you safe, listen to me, and protect you before and during and after the trial. You had to put your faith in the cross of Christ. And you had to know that, listen, the cross of Christ is able to keep me. First Timothy, 2 Timothy 1 and 12, For the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed, for I know in whom I have believed, and am persuaded that He's able to keep that which I have committed unto Him against 
that day. You see, listen to me, it's more than just believing in Jesus like He's a fairy tale or like He's a Santa Claus. You've got to believe in everything the Word of God says about Him. Somebody say amen now. Listen, if the Bible says the Bible says that He was the only sacrifice for sin, guess what? He was the only sacrifice for sin. And from this point on, you've got to live your life in that faith. Somebody needs to say amen. On, oh, somebody hear me. Can I tell you what happens though, when you get in this witness protection program? The very ones that you're going to testify against, the very ones that you can bring down, they've marked you that if they find you, they're going to kill you. They're going to wipe you out. They're going to do everything they can to eliminate you. Can I tell you what the witness protection program offers? The first thing they offer you is 24 hours, 7 day a week protection while they are in high threat or environments. Listen to me. His saints are always in a high threat environment. Listen to this. Psalms 121, 4 through 7. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. Let me read a few more scriptures. Why are y'all just looking at me like I'm crazy? Isaiah 4, 5 and 6. And the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion and upon her assemblies a cloud of smoke by day and the shining of a flaming fire by night. For upon all the glory shall be a defense and there shall be a tabernacle for a shade in the daytime from the heat and for a place of refuge and for a covert from the storm and from the rain. Psalms 34 and 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear Him and delivereth them. Somebody needs to hear me. Listen to me. I know that the enemy is going to come against you. Jason was all over it in Sunday school. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver them from them all. Everyone who lives godly in Christ Jesus, you've heard me preach it a hundred times, shall suffer persecution. But can I tell you what? You're in the witness protection program 24 hours a day, seven days a week. He's watching over you. He's not asleep. He's not going to let harm come your way. Somebody needs to hear me. But you've got to trust Him. You've got to hold on to the unchanging hand of our God. Somebody needs to hear me. I said the angels of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear Him and they deliver them. My God, I know the devil's against you. I know he's coming against you. But somebody just needs to go ahead and put your faith that he's able to keep that thing which I've committed unto him against that day. Why, somebody needs to help me preaching this morning. Can I get a witness to say these words? The devil's fought me. He's come against me. He's used this way and that way. He's used this error and that error. But here I'm still standing with victory. I'm not always shouting, not always speaking in tongues. But yet I've always got God with me. He's tried to kill me, but here I am. He should have... Oh, listen to this. Weeping may endure for a night. He should have went ahead and killed you in the night season. Do you know why? Because the Son of Righteousness has risen with healing in His wings. He should have killed you when He had the chance. Can I tell you why you're not dead? Because God is always watching over you. Can I tell you why you're not backslid? Because of me. I know I ain't backslid. I know how to pray. No, you're not backslid. Because there's a hand watching over you. That's right. Amen. You've been put in a program. The devil don't know nothing about it. Yeah. Even if he finds out where your dwelling is. Can I tell you what? These angels. Yes. The God that keepeth Israel yes. never slumbers nor sleeps. Jesus said, I'll go with you always, even to the end of the world. Somebody just ought to get on the page with me this morning. Just lift your hands for just a minute and say these words. I have been fought hard. The devil's come against me. He's fought me. I'm here to tell you every error and every way that he could come against me, he's come against me. But here I stand with my hands lifted up. I'm still safe and secure from all harm. I've still got peace of mind. I've still got sanity. Somebody needs to hear me. Can I just go ahead and preach to you just a little bit? There was a, there was a season in my life that, that, that the devil tried to kill me with some drunk drivers. Can I tell you why? And when the, devil, when the police said I should be alive. Guess what? I'm standing on the side of the road praying, lifting my hands, speaking in tongues. Oh, the police got there and said, where's that man that was in that car? I said, I'm right over here. Somebody needs to hear me. They said, "They said, well, you probably shouldn't be here on your own two feet. I said, here I am. They said, you probably need to go to the hospital. I said, why? There ain't nothing wrong with me. Somebody needs to hear me. 
I'm not trying to be mean. I didn't even have my seatbelt on, but here I am. Oh, somebody needs to hear me. I'm about to shout. Do you know that when, when a stroke wanted to take you out, the hand of God would remove the blood clot? When a heart attack wanted to kill you, the hand of God would give you divine healing and divine strength, divine health. Somebody needs to hear me while I'm preaching. I, I said, listen, I've heard preachers stand in pulpits preaching and a man come in with a gun to shoot him and the thing wouldn't fire. I need to get some safe folks here to help me this morning. <laughs> if he's scared, you can leave there. Somebody ought to be saying, yes, I know. Yeah. That the, the devices that the evil man, the wicked, devise against you. The Bible says every weapon formed against you shall what? Shall not prosper. And every evil word spoken against you shall be put to naught. He's put you in a 24-hour a day, seven day a week. Protection. My God, listen to me. It ain't mere flesh and bones. It ain't, it ain't Barney Files with guns with one bullet watching over you. You got a God watching, you got a God watching over you that by his word, words worlds are formed. When Satan wants to come against you, all he's got to say is this, get thee hits. And can I tell you what Satan has to do? He has to get thee hits. Somebody needs to hear me when I preach. I said, listen to me. He gives his angels charge over you, lest you shall dash thy foot against the stone. My God, I'm not in this world alone. I'm not trying to walk in this world alone. I've got somebody that's bigger than me, greater than me, bigger than all the heavens and the earth, who is above the heavens and the earth. He's watching over me, rebuking my enemy. Somebody needs to hear me. Oh, Brother Corpy, I love it. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. The angels of the Lord are camped around about them. Oh, somebody going to help me preach? I got a lot more preaching to do if y'all going to help me. If not, I'll come out and preach it tonight. What do y'all want? Listen to me. When you get in a witness protection program, here's what they do. After the trial's over with and they've kept you safe through all threats, the first thing they do Somebody needs to see it like I'm seeing it. They erase your old identity. That's right. That's right. And they give you a new one. Yeah. It don't stop there with authentic documentation. Yeah. Grab a hold of that. Yeah. When your witness has put them away, they don't just leave you and say, hey, you know, it's over with now. They go ahead and wipe out your old identity. They go ahead and create you a new one. They'll give you paperwork to prove what you are. Listen to this. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Did nobody's getting what I'm saying. When you, my God, listen to me. I said, listen to me. Can I tell you what your identity held before you got saved? You was a drunk. You was an alcoholic. You was a pedophile. You might have been a homosexual. You was full of love. Lust, you was full of pornography. You was per full of some of you might have been full of pedophilia. Somebody help me preach now. But can I tell you this? Whenever you fell in Christ and you asked Him to become your Savior, that old identity was washed away. Oh, somebody needs to hear me. He erased your whole past from you, Pre preacher. I just don't know if that's true or not. Yes, I do. The Bible says that your sins are removed as far from you as far as the east is from the west. Listen, listen. In Christ, there's no sinner in Christ. Can I tell you why? Because he wipes your, your slate clean. He erases your old identity. Now listen to this. The old man dies and the new man is raised in the newness of life. From that point on, as long as your faith is in the finished work of Christ, you're no longer the sinner man that you used to be. Listen to me. The righteousness of Christ is what you... You're in Christ. He's your righteousness. He's your peace. He starts erasing your old identity. Let me preach just a little bit. What do you mean he erases my old identity? The things that you used to love, just all of a sudden, you don't love them no more. Right. Somebody help me preach. That's, right. that's what the witness protection program, they put you in safety. Yeah. Everything that you used to be is washed away. My God, I got some scriptures to get to. And He gives you a new identity. Thanks be to God that I don't have my old identity. Thanks be to God that when the enemy comes in and tells me that I was a drunk and I always will be a drunk, I say, no, sir. Let me show you my ID now. Amen. My ID says I am a child of the king. Somebody needs to help me preach. 
I'm not who I used to be. I've got something's changed on the inside of me. Let me preach and read you some scriptures. Ephesians 4.22 That you put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Just what I've got written down here. Your old identity was a druggie, was a drunk, was a thief, was a murderer, was an adulterer. You was a child of the devil. I'm getting on some ground. It's going to make somebody mad. You're either a child of God or a child of the devil. There ain't no in between. There ain't no such thing as what well, my mama was of the devil and my daddy's of God. There ain't no in between. You're either a child of God or you're either for him or against him. You either gather or you scatter. Somebody needs to examine themselves this morning. Are you a child of God or a child of the devil? That's what your old man was. Your new identity is this. I'm a Christian. I'm holy. I'm righteous. I'm a child of God. The documentation, Romans 8, 15 through 16, for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. For the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. I could preach this all day. Listen to me. When you are justified in Christ Jesus, when you have received the spirit of adoption, notice this. This is legal terms. Boy, I got your attention there. What it means was this. Before you was guilty before God. You was guilty before a court of law. The sin of law and death cried out against you because you were a sinner. But when you're justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let me tell you this. It's a legal binding sentence in the eyes of God that you've been transferred from guilty unto innocent. Well, my friends, they still think I'm a drunk. Who cares? I don't care what my friends think about me. I try to live a good witness life in front of them, but there's still going to be people lie. There's still going to be people believe what they want to. I'm not here to please men. I'm here to please God. If God be for me, who can be against me? Oh, are we going to be a pleaser of man or a pleaser of God? Somebody needs to hear me. That's what you do when you're in high school, when you're in elementary school. You go with a peer pressure and whoever you're with. If they're drunks, you're a drunk. But if you're with Christians, you'll be a Christian. Can I get a witness now? Listen, when you become an adult, it's time to put away childish things. It's time to take on the name of Christ. I'm not a drunk no more. I'm not an alcoholic no more. I am a child of the living God. I'm a child of the King. My name has been written down in the Lamb's book of life. I don't live by my God. Can I preach a little bit? That old man that was a drunk, he's dead. I buried him in the tomb with Jesus Christ. And the new man has been raised to life right here before you. That's who I am. I'm not that man no more. My God, when your friends come up against you and say, do you still drink? Don't say no. I mean, don't say yes. Say no. I've been delivered by the blood of Jesus. I, I am a child of the King. Yes. My Lord. And that's what they do to you when you get in a witness protection program. They erase your old identity. And they give you a new one. Then they'll give you, listen to me, a new birth certificate. A new driver's license. Anybody hear me this morning? They'll give you a new social security card, a new ID, and from all, my God, I've got to preach now, it just hit me. And from all known purposes from this day on, I'm not that man that used to be in the inside drug ring. I'm a man that's free by the blood. Of Jesus. Here I'm going to get to my other point. I want to mix it with this one. The Lord just dropped into me. Listen to me. Then they move you into another city to start a new life so that you cannot be found. Am I preaching this morning or not? Listen to this. Numbers 35 through 6. Give me a few moments. The Lord was telling Moses that when you build your cities, that listen, here's what you're going to have to appoint. You're going to have to appoint some cities of refuge. 
Numbers 35 and 6, And among the cities which you shall give unto the Levites, there shall be six cities for refuge, which you shall appoint for the manslayer, that he may flee thither. And to them you shall add forty and two cities. Listen, if somebody was guilty of murder, if they had went out and killed somebody, whether they'd done it, listen to me, accidentally or not, they would run with all of their might to a city of refuge. And if they made it within the walls of that city of refuge, nobody could harm them until they had received a fair trial. Can I tell you what the Bible says that the city of God is called? It says it's got walls of salvation that's appointed unto you. Listen to me, when you found out that you was guilty, when that law come to you and told you that you was a drunk and you, you was an alcoholic and you was a murderer and you was an adulterer and you was a this and you was that. Listen to me, when that law comes to you, can I tell you what you've got to do? You've got to run with all of your might to the city of refuge. Somebody's not hearing me. Inside that city of refuge, there was a high priest. After the trial was given, listen to me, if you was pronounced innocent, you could, listen to me, if you was pronounced innocent of, of, of your crimes, you could dwell in that city right there until that high priest died. And when that high priest died, you was freed from, your, from whatever trial or whatever thing that you run into. Can I tell you this? There was a high priest whose name was Jesus. And can I tell you what he did? He hung on a cross between heaven and earth. And when he cried out, it is finished. When your high priest died, he died that you could go free. Somebody needs to hear me preach this morning. But if you was found guilty, they would stone you and immediately kill you. Don't believe me? You go read it for yourself. But can I tell you this? Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be found innocent. They shall be saved. I'm preaching this morning for the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and what? And they are saved. My God, listen to me real close. The witness protection program, after everything's said and done and they give you a new identity, they move you into another city. Do you know why? Because they're going to move you away from all harms. Can I tell you, there is a city called holiness, a city of God. The Bible said that, listen to me, there is a river whose, cities, whose, 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 whose streams make glad the city of our God. Can I tell you who the city of our God is? It's you. You used to live in the city of sin. You used to live in the city of iniquity. But now you're living in the city of God because because you got a high priest that saved you. Now, now, now listen to this. Uh, and as long as you stay in that city, you don't know nobody. Nobody knows you. You're as safe as you can be. But listen to me. It's up to you. It's up to you if you want to leave your city of safety. And go back to the city of sin. Jason was all over me this morning. You got a free choice, a free will. He's not going to make you stay in that city of safety. In that city of refuge, listen to me. If they had really killed somebody and were found innocent, they had a place to live and a place to stay where they was protected. But if they was to run out before the high priest died and they were found, they could be killed. I'm preaching this morning. Maybe somebody under the sound of my voice found yourself in a city of refuge. You knew the anointing. You felt the power of God. You tasted of that heavenly gift. But maybe you found yourselves fleeing out of the walls of salvation. My God, I'm If he did escape out of that city, he would be fine unless somebody found him. Then if somebody found him, they could legally kill him for what he had done. And I want to tell somebody this morning, God put you in a city of salvation. And maybe you fled out on your own. Maybe you're not fully out of grace yet. But I want to tell you the hounds of hell are on your track.
I'm preaching this morning. They've done picked up your scent. And they're following you to your job. Following you to your school. Following you to your home. And they might not have got you yet. And I'm feeling the Lord confirm this. Come on, Brother Robert, to the guitar. But you, you mark my words when they do find you. They're not going to deal kindly with you. Here's what the Bible says. That when an unclean spirit has gone out of a man. And that house has been swept and it's been garnished. In other words, listen. You've been pulled out of your sins and placed into a place of safety. And the Bible says that that spirit will go out. Go walking through dry places. In other words, seeking another host to consume. And when it findeth none, listen to this, it comes back to its house. And when it finds it swept and garnished, that means it's been cleaned and it's been decorated, but it's unoccupied. Somebody needs to hear me. Those things that you were free from, every now and then they've got every right to come back to see if you're right with God or not. And when they find you having fled the city of refuge, they'll go in and bring seven more back with him. This is not in my sermon. The Lord's just giving me this to me. And the latter condition of the man is worse than the first. Now I'm going to tell you what I feel in my spirit. The ones I'm talking to, the devil ain't found you yet. But he's on your tail. The hounds of hell is following you. And you know who I'm talking to? And it's bearing witness with your spirit. Can we all stand? The witness protection program is this. He'll protect you. He'll give you a new identity. They'll even move you to a new house. Give you a new job. He'll give you all the basic necessities of life. And I've not got to that yet. Which is the same thing God does for you when you're saved. He erases your old identity. Gives you a new one. Gives you a new place, a new city to live in. It gives you the basic necessities for life. He'll put a food, roof over your head, food on your table. But when you flee that city of refuge, you're in the mercy of Satan. And listen to me, I'm not going to single nobody out. I want to get somebody to come help us pray. But I believe there's more in this house. Please, can I get some ladies to come down and help pray?